Hey everybody, there has been a ton of updates regarding the Raspberry Pi method that I talked about right at one week ago. I thought what I would do in this video is to take a look at Stooge's new version of Pi Pawn and go ahead and let's try this on a Raspberry Pi today. So if we just begin by going over here to the commits, we can see that there has been a number of different things that's been added in here. So reworking the install, reworking some of the PPPoE, even adding in this web server, which looks just like this once you get it loaded, which is pretty sweet. And we'll cover this in just a moment. And really just kind of getting this to run with a number of different devices. So back at the main project page, we can see here is all of the Pi models that is now supported. It's also a bit easier to get it installed on your device. You don't have to go into Windows and use Windows Explorer to copy and paste files around. You can do it all through the command line. And then obviously some of the bigger things that was added in here was, was that now if you have internet access, you can use FTP, clog, and a bin loader, kind of do some crazy things like load a payload from your phone. There's also a virtual flash drive that you can use with the Pi to automatically have the goldhen.bin on it. So let's go ahead and let's look at what we need to do to install this from scratch. The tool that you will need is going to be the Raspberry Pi OS. And what we're going to grab is going to be the Raspberry Pi Imager. So go ahead and download that and get that installed. So again, we need to select our device. I have a Raspberry Pi 4 here. But again, all of the different models are located in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick Raspberry Pi 4 or the operating system. We're going to go back to other and then Raspberry Pi OS lot 64 bit. Then finally, we just need to choose where our SD card is and now press next. And here it's going to ask, would you like to apply OS customization settings? We're going to go to edit settings here. Now, this was already in here from last time, which is just Raspberry Pi.local. And this is great for the host name. You can leave it just like this. Or the username and password, I would recommend going ahead and setting up a username and password. And then finally, we are going to turn this on to configure a wireless LAN. So I just need to add in my SSID. And then you do need to put in your password. Now you can go right here and double check that it is correct. And you can also check this if you do have a hidden SSID. Okay, so everything else from here, we're just gonna make sure that enable SSH is turned on, and then you can toggle these off if you want to. From there, let's just go ahead and let's press on save. And we are gonna go yes here, and we are gonna go yes again. Okay, so go ahead and just let this finish writing and then we'll proceed to the next step. Okay, so now we have inserted our SD card into our Raspberry Pi and now we need to connect up to it to run these commands right here. So I'm just using PuTTY on Windows and the host name is just the Raspberry Pi.local. Port is 22 and this is SSH. So I'm going to click open here and now I need to log in with the username and password that I set up. And there we go. We can see I am now logged in to my Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and let's take each one of these actions and install them. So let's take the first one here. We're going to do a sudo apt update everything looks good there so now let's go ahead and install git so git is going to be a little bit easier way for us to get the latest and greatest repo instead of just copying it over via the windows explorer and then we need to run this remove command now if you just set this up from scratch there won't be anything on this right here but this is just basically removing any existing version of PyPawn that's on there. Now this next command also isn't necessarily needed at the moment since this is a fresh install, but this is basically stopping the PyPawn service. Again, you will get this right here because it isn't loaded just yet. Okay, great. Now we need to go ahead and run this git clone command. So let's just go ahead and let's paste this in there. Okay, so again, this is getting rid of the Windows Explorer. 
that we did before where we just simply copied this file over. Next up, we need to run this sudo command to make a directory into the boot slash firmware. You will see that that already exists and that's okay. So let's now cd into pipon. There we are. Now let's copy those over into our boot, our firmware. So let's go ahead and run that. And now we'll just cd into it. And we're going to change the mode here to 777 just to give it permission to execute. And then finally, we're going to run the install script. So let's go ahead and press OK on that. Then you will be asked this question right here. Do you want to enable the option to use the Python slower version of pppon? We're going to select no on that. And it does say the Python version will not be available. Do you want the console to connect to the internet after the PP pawn? We're going to select Y on that. And we are going to select no on this next question with, do you want to set a username and password? We'll hit no there. And since I am using the Raspberry Pi 4, I am not going to be using a USB to ethernet adapter. So in my instance, I'm going to select no here, but if you are using a Pi Zero 2, et cetera, then you definitely will be selecting yes on this one. Now there is some notes right in here on what the interface name will be. And then it's gonna ask, would you like to change the firmware version being used? The default is 11 and that is what I am using. So I'm gonna select no on that. And then it asks, would you like to change the PyLAN interface? The default is ETH0. As you can see right here, mine is definitely gonna be ETH0. So I'm going to select no on that. And then the next question here is, do you want the Pi to act as a flash drive to the console? So what this allows you to do is, is that instead of taking goldhen.bin and putting it on a USB drive, this uses the Raspberry Pi to emulate that. So we are going to select yes there. And now it finished up and it has rebooted. You can see that it says the Pi will mount as a drive and goldhen.bin has been placed in the drive. You must plug the Pi into the console USB port via the USB-C of the Pi. Okay, it looks like that is everything. So now we need to switch over to our PS4. Okay, so by this point, you probably already know the drill, but you do need to go into network and then set up internet connection. Make sure that's set to LAN. And then we're gonna go custom here, PPPOE. And then you can put anything in the user ID and password. And then for DNS is automatic, MTU is automatic, proxy server is do not use, and then you are free to just back out of it. Now, when you reboot this console, it will automatically be trying to connect to a network, just like you saw that pop up right there. Okay, let's see if this attempt works right here. Okay, there we go. That one did it. The really amazing thing about this is, is that this was completely hands-free and I absolutely did nothing but just power up my devices, which is pretty cool. Now, the killer feature here is, is that now you have access to this kind of web portal that is running on your Raspberry Pi. So if you head over to PPP on dot local, you will see this site right here. So from here, I can do a number of different things. So obviously one that will probably be the most interesting to people is, is that we can click on load payloads and we can now send a payload over to our PlayStation 4, which is very awesome. We could also do things such as unmount and remount the USB drive. We could restart PP Pawn that is running on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, normal features such as rebooting it and shutting down. You could do those sort of things too. And then I could come down here and I could change the interface if maybe this is something else. I could also change the firmware version from 11 to 9. I could put a check mark right here to use a USB Ethernet adapter. 
Maybe I didn't turn that on when I first went through that installation shell script and now I want it so I could come in and turn that on and then enable the USB drive and then here are the different ports. So what's really awesome is, is that you can manage that through a web browser as long as you're on the same network that your computer is on. So that is going to do it for this one. Thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Michael out.